Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I would like to take a look at the Bishop Scientific Method Single Bevel Broadhead. The past couple of years in the archery industry, there has been a push for these more, what I like to call premium broadheads, these top dollar broadheads. And they're not just more expensive by putting a sticker on it, they're more expensive for a lot of different reasons. Probably the most expensive I've come across is Bishop and their single bevel and some of their double bevel in their uh, three blade model broadheads. They're up in the hundred, you know, well over a hundred dollar range and a lot of people kind of freak out when they see something like that. Well, how on God's green earth can a broadhead be that expensive? I can get a pack of this or a pack of that for 30, 40, 50 bucks. Why do I have to pay two or three times as much for three broadheads? There are two factors that go into this and particularly for Bishop. One is the quality of the material that's used. In this case, it is S7 tool steel. A a very strong steel, a very durable metal, obviously. The second thing is this is not a piece together broadhead. This is not forged, this is not welded. This is a machine, a CNC machine took a piece of metal, CNC machined it down to this. The whole thread, the ferrule, the blade, the whole thing is one piece of S7 tool steel. There are no joints to break, there's nothing to bend other than the whole block of metal. So Dr. Sean out in California with Bishop Broadheads really wanted to create a high quality top dollar broadhead and to go along with Dr. Ed Ashby's work of single bevel broadheads to increase penetration, really get that S cut breakthrough bone, work on big heavy game. Bishop is known for doing broadheads all the way up to I believe 600 grains, really high quality products, have that high price tag to go along with that high quality product. Now, if you want to see a durability test of these things being shot with cinder blocks and through all sorts of other stuff, I highly recommend you check out other people's channels on YouTube, and particularly Lusk Archery Adventures. He has a whole bunch of stuff on Bishop Broadheads, not necessarily the scientific method, but the Holy Trinity and others as well. I strongly recommend you check out his and other videos. I don't really feel like mucking up the broadheads by shooting them through cinder blocks and brick walls and everything else. I think their toughness is going to be important applied with the metal and the machining that has been used. I'm more interested in their sharpness, how they come out of the package, how lethal they are, their cut, and how accurate they are downrange with minimal or no tuning with my bow. So we're going to take these right out of the package, screw them on to these 470 grain Easton Axis arrows, plug them into my Elite Energy 35, and here at 30 yards, launch them down at my block target and see what happens. So three broadheads, three arrows, and a initial oppression right out of the package. As you can see, it is a very small, short, beefy head. I love that style of broadhead. It is a single bevel, as you can see. So it's only beveled on the right-hand side. That goes along with the right-hand uh, uh, flying of my arrow, my right helical with my fletchings. You'll notice it's very short. This is only an inch cut. Uh, most broadheads today, you don't see get down uh, much below about an inch and a sixteenth. So an inch cut very small. I expect this to fly very close to a field point. I expect it to fly like a dart out of this bow. I've done no broadhead tuning with any broadhead yet this year. I've only tuned these arrows up to my setup with just field points. I've uh, paper tuned them uh, both bare shaft and with fletch. So I know that my bow is in tune. I know that my arrows are tuned to the bow. So if this broadhead flies off the target at 30 yards that we're standing here, we know that that broadhead might have a little bit to do with it. We have a little bit of wind today, but not too much. And it's definitely hot out here but I have not taken any warm-up shots so we're going to take these three shots cold and see what happens. So my first shot here was a pretty typical miss for me. Six o'clock we're about two inches low off the bottom of the dot. That's not too bad. Um, if I was aiming probably <laughs> A little bit uh, closer to center when that arrow went off that probably would have almost hit dead center second shot was absolutely perfect on my end and it was absolutely perfect here in the target third shot I think that's pretty solid I thought I was holding dead center but it's okay that it's about a half inch low so I can say probably with 100% confidence that at 20 yards for sure and definitely here at 30 I could just screw these broadheads right onto my arrow a fixed blade broadhead mind you granted a small one single bevel but I'm 100% I confident can screw this on, no more broadhead tuning required, and I can take these arrows out in the woods this fall. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not interested in shooting into a medium that I wouldn't see in the woods, like a cinder block or a brick or something like that, but I have no problem shooting through dirt clods. I pulled out some dirt uh, to plant some tomatoes earlier this spring. I left the topsoil out to dry, and I have one, two, three of them that are a couple inches thick, about yay big around. We're gonna <clears throat> send one of these broadheads, see how far it can go through it, 
I have a pretty good feeling it's going to break these clods up pretty darn easy. They're relatively dry, but they are definitely hard as a rock, if you will. So we're going to see how it looks. And this would simulate if you were to miss a critter or if the air was to pass through the critter and to stick into this dirt on the other side, what kind of damage you would expect for your broadhead. I have a feeling with the S7 tool steel and the Bishop reputa reputation that they have for toughness and durability that this is going to go through it like a uh, hot knife through butter. Maybe there might be one scuff and a little bit of cleaning to do on the other side, but we'll find out. So let's take a shot. All right, let's see what kind of damage we got here. Went through all three. I hit a little. I wanted to hit a little bit down here, but this is okay. At least I definitely ended up in the target. We'll pull it out here. And just like I had anticipated, with the exception of a little bit of a cleaning, that broadhead is nearly flawless. That's pretty darn good. I'm not going to touch the uh, sharpened edges, obviously. I don't want to cut myself. But the tip, it's not a typical tip. It's just a single beveled tip. So it's more like a flat point, actually. But that actually, according to a lot of uh, scientific research by, well, I should say rather field research by Dr. Ashby and, and others, that actually helps increase penetration and definitely aids in the cutting of the single bevel as it enters the animal. Um, but I'd say that's perfect. I can't, I have an arrow spinner out here and I can't spin it in my hand to see because this is not a uh, pointed tip. It won't, it won't roll correctly. It'll just kind of wobble on itself. But I can tell you right now that this broadhead probably is going to be perfectly fine to take my Lansky sharpener to, clean, wipe it off, uh, Lansky sharpener, put it in the quiver, and it'll be ready to go this fall. Now, I'll never claim to be a broadhead expert or that I do the best testing, but I can tell you one thing, a test of accuracy is the number one test for me. And the fact that I can put this broadhead onto my arrow, not tuned for broadheads at all, any broadhead, not just this one, any broadhead, screw it onto the arrow, take a shot at 30 yards, which is for a lot of bow hunters here, particularly in the Northeast, 30 yards is kind of like the maximum shot we get anyway. 30, 35 yards, you really don't have shooting lanes that get much longer than that. And I realistically, a lot of my shots that I take at animals are between 15 and 25 yards. So really, 30 yards, that's a gold standard. And if it's on at 30, it's probably going to be on at 20. Now, I'm going to shoot at 20 to definitely make sure. I'm going to shoot at 15 to definitely make sure. But I can tell you right now, a brawn head that is perfectly tuned out of the box, a fixed blade broad head that's perfectly tuned out of the box with no extra work on my part, that's a winner winner chicken dinner in my book. You know, if you're thinking about buying a premium broad head, you know, and you're looking at Bishop and you're looking at Iron Will and you're looking at all these other companies and you think, gosh, why do I need to spend the money? Why do I need to work on something like that? Why should I spend top dollar on a broadhead when I can spend 30, 40, 50 bucks and get my old reliable muzzies? I can go to Walmart and buy some rages. I can get an NAP uh, kill zone or something like that. Why would I want to spend top dollar? I can tell you right now that Bishop and Ironwell, two top dollar broadhead companies, they're the only two that have ever pulled the fixed blade broadhead out of the box and it shot exactly with my field points. Magnus is a close third. They've definitely been by far the third closest, but Bishop and iron wheel. Granted, they're kind of cheating a little bit with their smaller cut, but a fixed blade broadhead that shoots like a field point right out of the box, I mean, come on, it doesn't get any better than that. I remember for years with a three blade broadhead like a Muzzy or a NAP Thunderhead, something like that, just spending hours of frustration pulling my hair out trying to get it to tune by field points. So the fact that this broadhead is accurate out of the box, it's made of S7 tool steel, it's the toughest thing that you could possibly throw at a deer or elk or bear or sheep or goat or a pig if you live down south. It's definitely going to retain its sharpness with that single bevel. It's going to break through bone. It's going to carry its weight down range. And you don't have to buy the 100. Maybe you want to do 125, 200, 300, 400 all the way to the 600 grain single bevels. Gosh, that seems insane. If you really want to check out more Bishop Broadhead videos, I highly recommend you check out the Ranch Ferry. I'll put down links to some of those videos in the description below. He doesn't have a whole bunch of subscribers, but Troy knows what he's talking about when it comes to building a heavy air with FOC, and he loves single bevel broadheads, and particularly those from Bishop. So I hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, and enjoy the sport of archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.